So hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curvadlot.com and it is time again for our famous DAX Fridays. I'm really happy that it's Friday again, I have to say that. Um, today's video is actually going to be about time. And if you've been following my last videos, I've been talking about time and calendars quite a, quite a lot. So on Friday we had the working days using DAX and then on Monday talking about how to calculate the working days without holidays and without um, weekends and yet again we're talking about time and probably I'm doing this unconsciously because this week I have not had any time whatsoever and just the lack of it makes me talk about it I don't know <laughs> could be but yeah, as, as you've seen, I've, I've published some of the videos a bit late, but it's, it's been hard to put everything together. I hope you you have uh, understanding for that. But anyway, today is going to be about the function time, and we're going to calculate working hours, or I'm going to show you a way to do that. You might think that well, this this is a little bit too easy, perhaps, but there are some interesting things about how Power BI or Power Pivot handles time. And I recommend you to at least stick around for the beginning of the video where we go through that. And then perhaps you can skip the example as it might be too easy for you. But make sure you stick around for how Power Pivot handles time. OK, it's time to begin. Let's start the video. Okay, so today's example is going to be actually a simple one, but still I think it's an interesting, uh, it, there is good to know how to manage time using Power BI. Sooner or later you'll have to do it. So I'm going to show you just a few tricks on how to manage it. So what we have here is this very simple example. We have a column date and then we have a time uh, column. And uh, what we are going to do is actually create a custom column that tags this and says yes if it is a working hour, no if it's not a working hour. And then we will use it as a filter so the user actually can choose to see the results for either all working and non-working hours. So just pick, for example, working hours. So to do that, we need to manage the time. And before we start creating the measure, let's go to the documentation to see how Power BI manages time. Okay, so here we are with the time function DAX in Microsoft documentation, and this is quite interesting. Nothing is strange about the, the actual measure. You can see that it's very, very simple. You have time and then here you put the hour, here you put the minute, and here you put the second. And here you have a definition of how to do it. This is a number from 0 to 23. And then uh, it explains that if you have a value greater than 24, then it will in, in the hour, then it will be treated as an hour value. If a minute is over 59, it will be converted to hours and minutes and, and so on. So nothing strange. Now, the important remarks start actually here. And it says the return value is a time in daytime format. So it is actually explaining it very well. I think Microsoft did very well here. It says that um, Microsoft Excel, as we all know, it stores dates and time as serial numbers. But DAX does not that. It just stores date and time in a daytime format. So what does that mean? They have a good example here. It says times values are a portion of date value. You know, when you, when you have this column, you always see the date and the time. And then it says, and in the serial number system are represented by a decimal number. So for example, they put us an example. This says 12 p.m. is 0 0.5 because it's half day. Okay, so this is how Power Pivot Engine is storing this information. And it says, you can supply the arguments to the time functions values directly. You can just type it, 
or it could be a result of another expression or reference in a column. So that is good to know. And then this we've already covered. And then they said to improve readability of the time values, they said that make sure you format in, you know, like Microsoft Excel format. So your users, they do not see 0 0.5. They will not be able to guess what that is. They will see 12 p.m. So nothing strange there. But just make sure that you remember that DAX engine or the Power Pivot engine does not store serial numbers as you would believe in Excel. I thought that, but they don't. And then they give you here an example. For example, 3 a.m. It could be either 300 or 27. And this is what they are telling you here, that if it's bigger than greater than 23, then it will be divided 24, which gives you 3, and then it will be 3 a.m. Okay? So interesting to know and important to know when you're working with time. So now that you know that, let's go back to Power BI and let's build our measure to calculate the working hours. Okay, so here we are in Power BI again. We're going to create a new column, we said. And we are going to call it working hours question mark equal. And the formula is actually, or the measure is actually very easy. Say if or, so let's start with if. If date, time, time. So if a column where the times, the hours are stored is less than time function. And remember, hour, minute, second. So we say we work nine to five, so we write nine American. So, and so we say if the time is less than nine o'clock or the time is bigger than five o'clock, then those are not working hours, otherwise they are. So this is very easy, right? And here we have it. So now it's very straightforward. You just go back here and then you can create actually a slicer. And then you know, have your users select either yes, I want to see only working hours or no, or you could also say select all. Yeah. So, well, the, the example is very, very simple, but I just wanted to talk about how time is handled in Power Pivot. And I hope that is uh, a little bit clear for you and you remember the next time you're working with time. So this is all for today. Um, and uh, did you know actually that this is DAX Friday's number 48? <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, there's a lot of weeks of DAX. But um, as I've told you before, I have a small surprise regarding DAX that I would like to share with you very soon. But because the DAX Friday is number 50 is so close, I'm actually going to wait for that. So not next week, but week after, I'm going to reveal something that I hope you really will enjoy. But until then, have a really, really good Friday, great weekend. And uh, don't forget to like or share if you think somebody else will like it. And uh, of course, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe for more videos. I publish Power BI videos from Monday, Wednesday and Friday. The last thing, as I always say, don't remember to click the bell to receive notifications when I publish new videos because YouTube doesn't do that anymore. So with all that said, have a great weekend.